The other reason the title is vacant is because Habib Nurmagomedov walked away, one of the greatest of all time. Do you think either one of these guys is going to have more to prove? He's a fucking time? bitch. He's a fucking pussy. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to dedicate this fucking song called Mask Off. Chase a check, never chase a bitch. That's Khabib. Whoa, whoa. A lot in your last two fights leading up, leading up to those fights out of your control, last minute change of opponents before Justin, and obviously limited training before your fight against Charles. So how is camp this, this fight week, Van, leading into your fight? I'm a businessman. Um, CSO stands for Chief Security Officer. I had to go back to the board, squash some numbers. Uh, we hit the bag. We put everything we could into this camp, and uh, I had to resource myself to my old Ultimate Fighter coaches. Uh, I made contact with Brock. He said, uh, do you understand what I was talking about, the difference between chicken shit and chicken salad? I said, absolutely. I talked to Coach Marty Morgan. He said, did you let him take you down on purpose? I said, no. And he said, why the fuck are you going to let anybody else take you down? I talked to Greg Nelson. He said the same kind of thing. And I talked to Coach Eric Paulson. Now, each one of these guys, they know me and they know exactly what I can come from. And uh, I just honed in. And um, there's no words for this shit, man. Opera number. We're going to go out there and get this victory. And then I'll ask, uh, what, how do you like the fans back here? Obviously, you're a big fan favorite right now. Absolutely. <laughs> UFC 262. We're coming at you hard on the right fucking hook. Make sure you guys buy that shit ahead of time. Let's go. And uh, I think Tony needs to recognize that I'm in front of him. He needs to not worry about Habib right now. He needs to be worried hey, about Hey, homie, me. I already know that you went to go help Justin Gaethje. You're a little bitch for going out there and helping him fight for the title. I didn't know you did that. You listened to Ali Abdelaziz and he fucking manipulated your but ass. When the one thing asks is, you for is help, I'm after you, you dude. Offer your, you look at me. I have nothing against you. Listen, but seriously, my punches listen, are gonna Justin fucking start your help ass. And I I'm gonna him. knock you out. Listen, but if you had asked me help, I would I'll help you, you too. But I don't care who, how many fucking Ultimate Fighter fucking people you have over there at UFC. I don't uh, even know what that Kings means. MMA. Look at Kings MMA. You have how many UFC fighters training with you? It was the same thing on the Ultimate Fighter when they all went against me. You know what the fuck happened with that one? What? Basically, it says you can't bring anybody inside that octagon with you, kid. You think you fucking know me. You want to do spinning shit and everything else like that. You think I'm unorthodox. Kid, I'm going to hit you so fucking hard. That's it. I love it, Tony. I love it. I, I want to see it. I want to see every bit of it. I, I hope you, you show up. I'm going to fucking slam you. I hope you show up like you say I'm gonna you I'm going to slam you. I'll, I'll be you. there, bud. I'll be I'm there for you. everything. I'm going to slam you. I'm going to slam you. My student, I broke his fucking rib. <laughs> Well, that's a dick move, bud. Why would you, why would you do that to your own student? Because he made me do it. <laughs> Question for Michael. Yeah. Well, Benil, I was curious. Were you expecting that sort of reception from Tony? Say that again. Were you expecting that sort of reception from Tony? Honestly, I wasn't even sure what I was going to get from Tony, but I, I'm, I'm glad I got it. Me too, buddy. The fight's with you. It's not with anybody else. I appreciate it, bud. Let's go. Buddy. Tony, you say the fight's with Benil, but not anybody else. But what will it be like to finally fight with the fans around you? Uh, it was exciting when there was nothing there. And it was exciting when there's something here. Uh, when we go out there, it doesn't really matter. Everything disappears. And it's just like, it's like tunnel vision. It's exactly what it is. We go out there and we give our best. It's going to be a gentleman fight. We're going to go out there and we're going to give you fans exactly what you fucking earn. It's a good, hard fight. You got these two gentlemen who are fighting for a vacant title who I had 12 fights in a row and I fought for a title, but then I got stripped, right? The other day, one of the cameramen tripped over a fucking cord when I was giving an interview, and it was actually not funny. The funny thing is, is God never puts enough on our plate that we can't handle. And last year, I put so much on my damn plate that he fucking fixed me up for this year, and 2021's my bitch. You know, Poirier and Connor having their trilogy, so he couldn't, could not handle, or could, could not have scripted it any better. It's perfect. Thanks. You fucking dodged me too, Chandler. Hey, that's, that's not true. You're a bitch. Hey. Every fucking person out here except for this guy right here that's sitting next to me. Hey, that's not true. I'm going to be real, man. Tony. The that's other side, true. those are the other people. Hey, you could have fought me January over here, side's victory table. You could have fought me January 23rd, and I would have done the same thing to you. Hey, as man, you fucking look. said no, man. I'm going to be real. You got, you got this shit handed to you. You got Dana White privilege. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> Thanks, Dana. <laughs> it's all love, baby. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Check this shit out. Dana was right. He said timing is everything. Like I said, it wasn't meant for me to have the title, man. I would have gave everybody a chance, right? Fucking awesome. You know, absolutely fucking not.
these guys are going to try to keep the title away from me as much as they can. I'm Mexican. It doesn't matter if you're colored up here or not. But I'm made with American parts, too, so let's fucking go. <laughs> Do you have another question? Yeah. Thanks, Charles. And for Tony, uh, someone asked Benil about the reception you've gotten in Houston. It seems like this is El Kakui country. Are you surprised by the reception you've gotten here? Uh, no, I was off for a year and a half. Um, I had an injury that was from my arm on a arm break. A year and a half uh, set me back. Uh, when I came back here and I fought in Houston against Mike Rio, I finished him. I got lots of love here. I remember when uh, Travis Brown, I think it was Travis Brown, he said, Dana, I know we're here for the, the, the performance bonus meeting. And he says, you know, everything's bigger in Texas, Dana, right? Right, remember that? And he said, he said, how about a bigger bonus? So I'm going to ask you, Dana, since we're here like last time, can we get a bigger bonus this time? If we go out there and get a fucking bigger fight? Can we get it? Can you dig it? Let's get it. Do you have Please. another question? I do. <laughs> One more. Do you have Please. another question? I do. <laughs> One more. Go ahead. I guess that's a no. <laughs> Next question is from Vanille. Do you think Tony is c closer to the end of career or the beginning of career? Do you think Father Thomas tapped on his shoulder since we're starting to see stuff that we hadn't seen happen to him his whole career happen more frequently? Well, I mean, he's 30, 37, I believe, right? I'm so, fucking old. Yeah, I mean, I'm, still no, the I'm shit not, out of these youngsters. I'm, I'm not that young say? either, but like, uh, obviously, we're at the latter end of our careers. But That's you, brother. That's uh, you. Thanks. That's bud. all quits on you, man. Yeah. I can see it in your face. Okay. That's Anyways, fear right there. No, no, no. That's in, fear. In my opinion, is it's the latter end of his career, but it still could be the best part of his career. It just depends on him. I still haven't even hit my prime yet. And we know you're a quiet guy by nature. What do you think about the about the trash talking back and forth? With, Listen, I I just don't understand the guy. He says, "Oh, it's because I'm Mexican, bro." Canelo is one of the highest argue. paid athletes because he's Mexican. Mexican. And you're getting it's frustrated. Like, I was born in Iran, a certain American, living Look in America. Me, like, there's I'm no inside issue. Your head. Like, quit making it I'm about race. Quit buddy. trying to get. Quit trying to find Fear, something to complain about. Just, just show up Fear, and brother. fight. Fear. That's what you're going to hear. The, the next one is to Tony. I know you're a Canelo fan. Did you like that performance last week? I didn't I watch. I was too busy training. I didn't watch it. I was busy training. I was pushing a truck or fucking pulling something or like slamming something or doing something, losing weight or doing things that obviously, check this out. I don't take vacations. Look at Kobe said the same thing. He went to Go Mountain. He fucking, you know, this is off of something I listened to. And he, he went back to his resources and he was saying, these times right now, he's like, if you're, if you're spending time on vacation, you're watching these things out there, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. I went out there the other day when UFC came to film me, right? Check this out. And I, and I, I told him, I was like, check this out. Film my gloves right there. You get some B-film, B-reel right there. And right there, I had 225 on the rack, right? I had 225 on a deadlift bar, and I started hitting traps. And I told him straight up, I was like, hey, they're like, why don't you, why don't you tell us that you're going to do this? I said, I'll get 1,000 before the day's done. So I had 225 on a trap bar. Took me about four hours. Will be safe to say that this is El Kukui 2.0? Uh, I wouldn't say it's El Kukui 2.0. I would say in the last couple of years, walked around a drunk and stupid for everybody to kind of like assume that that's how I was. And then what I did was I took an Olympic mentality and I took away all the variables, right? Even before when I went for the UFC and the Ultimate Fighter, when I had to fill out all the questionnaires and the shit, I took away all the variables and I went back to the drawing board where before everybody knew me. And uh, it's an Olympic mentality and you guys will see it on Saturday, UFC 262. Next one for Dana. What's your gut tell you? Huh? What's your gut tell you? He's hungry. <laughs> I will see.